Well, hello and welcome everyone to the uh, webinar about email marketing, Unlocking the Power of Email Marketing, which is hosted today by VBout. I am Audrey Dotson. I'm the Marketing Director for VBout, and we are running an entire series of these webinar courses as part of a full digital marketing online course you'll be able to access for free. So thank you for joining us today. Just a few um, logistics before we get started. So I have muted everyone on the call. So if you have any comments or any issues during this webinar, <clears throat> please type them into the chat. And I may not be able to see it, but Kelly, who also works with VBout, will see your chat message. And if it's an audio problem or if you have a question, she can uh, try and help you out. Or if it's a question on the content, we will have a Q&A session afterwards where we can address some of your questions. Uh, but do let us know if you have any problems with uh, any technical problems like viewing the screen or sound. We definitely want to make sure that everyone can hear me and, and can um, get the content from this. So that said, um, we are also, we're talking today about email marketing, which is something that heavily uses marketing automation. And VBout is a marketing automation platform. A lot of what we're going to teach today are things that we teach our clients on a daily basis, clients who are using our software, but there are also tips and tricks that we have employed as a small startup growing our business. <clears throat> so after this session today, we are actually going to do something different and special. If anyone on the call wants to see a demo of VBout, we will have that right after this webinar. And Richard, our founder and CEO, uh, will be available to demo some of the email tricks that we discussed today using VBout. And then he'll also be able to answer some of the more technical aspects of email that we're going to touch on in this, uh, in this webinar. So with that said, <clears throat> we've got a lot to cover today. And please excuse me, my, my voice is a little hoarse. <laughs> so um, <clears throat> let's get started and uh, discuss how you can improve your marketing with uh, email marketing. So uh, just, you know, for the record, all of this content is put together by the entire team at VBout. We come from a lot of different backgrounds and uh, have a lot of contributors who put uh, work into this for you. We're going to go through uh, the reasons why email still works, the goals you can achieve with email, uh, strategies for success, different uh, tips and tricks you can use, and then looking at improving your campaigns, especially for 2016 and beyond. As digital marketing is always changing fast, you got to be on top of the new trends. We'll introduce you to some marketing tools that will help you on your way as well. So the seven reasons why email works. Well, it's an easy way to reach mobile customers without investing in new technology. You know, developing mobile apps costs a lot of money and takes a lot of time, but email more people are reading email on mobile today than on desktop, and you can catch customers when they're out and about and on mobile with email, and it's fairly cheap and easy. And these tend to be your loyal customers. They're people who've given you their email addresses. And so this is a way of keeping your, lo your loyal customers informed, and they are the ones who actually read the email from their favorite brands. Also, email coupons in the in the e-commerce space um, or in B2C is a way to drive in-store sales. So it's not just about um, getting more traffic to your website, but you can actually get more people into your stores. And according to Deloitte, 65% of consumers say that email coupons are an important um, item when they go grocery shopping online or, or in-store. Other reasons, email is really versatile. It's, it's easy to customize and it's easy to integrate with your other marketing tactics. And you can personalize emails and uh, with names and with the user data that you're collecting. And this makes you able to give better recommendations. And this all makes email work even better. 
And according to Forrester Research, 85% of U.S. retailers consider email marketing one of the most effective customer acquisition tactics. That is a, a, that's a huge number. Other reasons why email works. So email marketing, I mean, it's inexpensive. You might have noticed on the landing page or in some of the emails we sent out, there's this really impressive number that email marketing has up to 3,800% ROI or return on investment. When you think about how much it actually costs to send email, then it's not so surprising that the ROI can be so high. Uh, especially with a lot of the new tools available on the market, a lot of these software um, providers that allow you to design these really great emails, they're really cheap. So for every dollar you spend, you could see $38 return on investment. Email's that powerful, especially if you're emailing and engaging people who gave you their email addresses. So these are customers, clients, users who are already a little further down the funnel. And with those, it allows you to track and build those relationships. And it allows you to understand their, their needs and their wants. And all of this can be automated and set up with uh, smart hooks and triggers. Smart hooks are um, the little behavioral pop-ups and things that happen in digital content that is based on how a user is interacting with your content. If you have questions about that or how they work, this is definitely something VBout can answer for you as well. So what are the six main goals that you can achieve with email? Well, as I mentioned already, you can maximize your ROI from your digital marketing. Um, and you can increase customer loyalty, uh, loyalty and profitability. <clears throat> that means that the value, you can actually increase uh, the value and the spend for each of your individual customers with email. Others. Um, not just your loyal customers, but this can actually help you close more sales and increase customers. You can lead your prospects that come to your website, people who might be somewhat interested, and uh, you know, but they gave you their email address. So it can help you lead them through the customer journey with content, with interaction engagement, and close more sales. So it's really, uh, it, it provides you important information about that person. And, and it allows you to, um, to reach them better. Also, you know, based on how users are interacting with that email, it's just giving you that much more data about what they like, what's going to work, and it allows you to, to tailor messaging even better. Uh, and also, email is something that you control completely. So it's, uh, it's all within your hands to have consistent brand outreach and messaging to your loyal customers and to your prospects. And then with that kind of control, with the, the tracking and the feedback that you're getting, it just it's all more accurate than on social media. Uh, with social media, you have to wonder, did someone even see your post? And, and social media is also kind of a live environment where you have a community, you have different things going on. Email you control, the tracking and feedback is more accurate, your responses are generally going to happen within 48 hours, and all of this helps you build your data uh, better on each of your buyer personas and your customers. <clears throat> so what are the first steps to really getting a good email campaign going? <clears throat> well, you have to grow your email list. This is important. <laughs> if you don't have a good email list, you have no one to actually send your beautiful emails to. Uh. So how do you do that? So if you're a new company, or even if you're a company that's been around for a little while, how can you grow that list? There are both online and offline tactics that you can use, and there's a lot of different ones. It can be daunting, but we're gonna lead you through what we think are some of the best. So this works especially great in a B2B setting. So you've seen a lot of companies offering ebook downloads or webinars like we do and and different types of information white papers infographics <clears throat> you can offer these items out and you can advertise them post about them on social and in order to get these downloads potential clients customers have to give you email addresses 
So this is a one way, and it works especially well with B2B. And here's a, you've got an Aveda, which is a B2B, uh, sorry, B2C example. And, um, and there are different tactics you can use here, which is, you know, you can encourage subscribers to share and forward your emails. So this is another way it's sort of um, referring products and services. And this is really good, especially for a beauty brand like, like Aveda or any kind of uh, consumer-facing product. You can also promote contests, so in order to win, they have to give their email addresses. And, uh, and another great B2B example is you can offer your product uh, for free. And you can make sign up necessary in order to get the tool. Some, a lot of companies, and you've seen this with a lot of software, software as a service companies, they'll offer uh, a basic level, uh, entry level package that you can get for free and in order to unlock more features of the service you have to pay. And, but this is another way that they're just getting the email address in order to build a relationship and understand customer needs. Other things you can do is uh, you can promote a lead generation offer on social media. So this example we've posted here is one from Facebook. Facebook is doing a lot these days in terms of uh, different ways that businesses can use their platform, and this is just one of them that you can look into. And increasing your landing pages. So we had an entire webinar and um, an ebook on landing pages, and there's a lot you can do with landing pages, and the more you have, the more opportunities you have to capture email addresses and capture potential uh, leads, potential new clients. It, it, gives, it gives individuals more reasons to find you and to give an, an email address. And if you want more information on landing pages, definitely check out um, our other webinars and our other content. We've written a lot about what you can do with them. So other things that you can do uh, is do an in-person event. So these are some uh, offline examples that you can do. You can have a conference or a meetup. We do monthly meetups, and it's a way for us not only to engage with the community, but to, you know, get email addresses and stay in touch as well. And uh, with these, you can collect emails during registration, but also at the event. And then the other thing you can do directly on your website is to create smart pop-ups and opt-in forms. We have some examples here. So, so this example is one of the, the e-books that VBAT has. This is the landing page for it. And then here you have an example of a, a pop-up that might, that might pop up on a page and, and ask you for an email address to sign up to a blog or for more information. A lot of companies will have this on, your blog, on their blog while you're reading it. After you've cre uh, created a, a nice sized email list, the next thing you should worry about with emails is the timing and frequency. Mm. Email's been around a long time. So there's been a lot of data and research that has gone into determining when is the best time, what is the best amount to send, and, and there's just so much research behind it. It's uh, definitely one of the oldest forms of digital marketing, but it continues to be powerful and it continues to get more interesting. So take advantage of all the research that is out there and look into the correct amount of email to send and when. Now this isn't going to be the same for everyone. In a B2B setting, a B2C setting, it might be different. So the most important first question is who? Who are you emailing? And after you answer that question, and this is your buyer persona that we've talked about in, in some of our other sessions as well, after you answer that, then you'll have the answers to, okay, so what should I send, when, and how often? Because we know we all receive a lot of emails, and you don't want to be annoying, and you don't want to overwhelm your subscribers. So these are some guidelines, some general guidelines that you can use around frequency. Companies that send between 16 and 30 targeted emails monthly see a click rate of more than two times greater than companies that send two or fewer. So, so let's read this again. 16 to 30 targeted campaigns monthly. 
So this means that, first of all, okay, you are sending a lot of emails, however, they're targeted. So that means you're sending, you know who you're sending it to, and you're giving them the right kind of content. And companies that are sending out too few, probably they're just getting ignored or people, people will forget about you. So looking at some median open rates, now again, this is across industries, it's very general, uh, it might be different, it might be different for your particular industry and business, but the median open rate of 32.4% and the median click rate of 6.5% is what you can expect to see. So if you have results that are below or you know, below this, you might want to look further into why, and if you have results much higher than this, then um, you can be proud that you're higher than, than the average. So based on this research, if you send more than 30 targeted emails, there is a drop in open rates. So there is a point at which you're sending too many. So there's too few, there's too many. Uh, we can think of it sort of like the Goldilocks principle where there's a happy middle ground. And again, it might be different for your particular users. So it's really best to keep an eye on these numbers and to always alter as you go along and see them go up and down. In general, Tuesday to Thursday are the best days to send. <clears throat> but that doesn't mean you shouldn't test out on Sunday. Sunday is a good day to test out. People often are winding down from the weekend, they're checking emails and catching up on events and preparing for the work week. Mm. You might find it's easier to reach uh, B2B clients if, you know, they don't really check personal emails much during the work day. So test out different times. And then this is, uh, this is one example where marketing automation definitely becomes a, mar a marketer's best friend. Emails can be scheduled in advance, uh, so if you do want to send on a Sunday, you can schedule it with the software. And then, if you have a global audience where you have people all over the world, marketing automation allows you to send emails based on their right time zones and their right timing. So you can always get the timing and the frequency right anywhere your, your client or customer is with marketing automation. So now that we've looked into timing and frequency, you sit down and you're ready to write your campaigns and determine what you're going to send out. How do, how do you determine the content in the best way? There's so many creative and great things going on with email. It's, it's, it's getting more fun, actually. Um, but first things first, you need to know uh, what your target market will view as valuable and relevant. So just like with social media posts and content marketing in general, you need to provide something that is valuable and relevant, otherwise people are just going to find you annoying like spam. <laughs> so these are some general guidelines to follow for all email marketing. Stay focused and keep the format simple. You know, have a headline, an image, a teaser, and a button, but that's it. Don't go crazy. Um, you know, make your, make your purpose clear. And definitely use behavioral de data. So we're going to we're going to mention this many, many, many times throughout this presentation, but the most important thing to success with email or content in general is knowing what your users want to hear and providing that. And make sure that it's aligned with what they signed up for. So if they signed up for, you know, emails uh, for recipes and you're going to start sending them, you know, something completely unrelated to cooking, you know, you're going to get a lot of unsubscribes. You're going to get people unsubscribing and you're, you're going to make them not very happy about having signed up. And use compelling images. So we're definitely, everyone at this point knows this, we're in a visual world. And you have to use compelling images, but you can't use too many with emails. Um, and we're going to get more into some of the technical things that you have to watch out for with using too many images or graphics. Use a couple compelling images that are really eye-catching and you'll get higher engagement. Oops, it went backwards one. And then also take your conversion seriously. So one thing that you should always include in an email is a call to action. And this is going to drive your conversions. The call to action should be very clear 
and it should tell uh, your audience exactly what's going to happen when they click on it. So it should, you know, tell them sign up or go to our website or click here for this. And it should be very, very clear. And as I mentioned a minute ago, you know, images are important and you should make it really eye-catching and, and beautiful, but put the content ahead of the design. Great design will improve your, uh, your results, but a clear purpose with an interesting subject line and a very direct call to action button are the most important for influencing your audience to take action. Other forms of content that you can try, um, so we've mentioned a few like coupons or contests, newsletters. Newsletters are a great way to keep in touch with your subscribers, keep them informed on new and interesting things. Some tips on newsletters um, is to keep it to one specific topic. Don't give too many, you know, off the wall things. People have limited attention uh, spans, limited time, and always remember you're competing with an average of about 100 emails that uh, the average business person gets daily. And then balance it, you know, um, for a newsletter, keep it 90% educational and 10% promotional. People are going to get very bored very quickly if all you're doing is sending out promotional material about your company. They're not going to continue reading because it doesn't have that much worth for them. You have to produce content that's going to help people in their work and in their lives. So, you know, and set expectations with consistency. Uh, I know that a lot of people come to me and they ask me for digital marketing advice or, you know, what they can do. Mm. And especially if it's one of the small entrepreneurs that I, I meet with sometimes at events, I always tell them, you know, the first most important thing is to have one person dedicated to consistency. You're not going to build, build an email subscriber list. You're not going to build an audience on social media. If you're not consistently posting, people will stop paying attention to you and they're going to stop opening your emails. So consistent with the timing and frequently, uh, frequency, send it every week on Wednesday. And keep a similar theme, a similar topic, so that every Wednesday when I go to open up my email, I'll say, oh, you know, this company, I'm, I'm ready for my, my weekly dose of whatever it was I signed up for. And, and as I mentioned, so we said use some beautiful images, but keep the design and copy at a minimum. It's less time consuming and it's easier uh, on the eyes for your readers. So use a few images, but don't go crazy with it. Um, you want it to look nice, but very, very simple and very easy to read and get through. So let's look at one example of a newsletter type um, success story, like I just mentioned. And we're gonna, we've looked at a company called Moz. Moz is in the B2B space, and what they do are inbound marketing tools. And they use their platform to curate really interesting marketing content, and they package it into a Moz Top 10. And this is a really great idea because they're not even writing the content. So the amount of effort that they have to personally put into it isn't very much. You know, they're, they're curating content for their followers and making a really nice list. And it shows their clients, customers, leads that they are industry experts and people really enjoy their newsletters. I find them actually very helpful and great. And um, it also displays what you can do with their products because newsletters and this type of content is one tactic in inbound marketing. So Moz gets gold stars all around because they're showing you what you can do with their own software they're not spending too much time writing this weekly uh, top 10. They do it consistently every week. And people really look forward to it. And it shows that they're also industry experts, and it's a great example. Another uh, wonderful uh, example of marketing success, email marketing success, is B2C from Sephora. Sephora's got really killer marketing campaigns that they do, and they have a really fiercely loyal following as well. They're a global beauty brand, and um, they do several different things. They do a lot of different things with their, their loyal followers. First of all, they make things very exclusive, and they call their followers 
beauty insiders. So when they write you an email, you know, it's, it's to you a beauty insider. And they create a lot of buzz with, you know, coupon specials around their products, but they go further and they do things like this, uh, this competition that they were running, which was win a trip to Paris. And, uh, and as you see at the bottom of it, below the fold, they actually feature um, one of their products, but they keep everything above the fold and they give, they give their subscribers plenty of interesting content and in, with which to engage. You can see the very clear call to action button there in the middle saying click for details. And their images usually you can also click as well, which take you, take you to their website for various content pieces. So let's look at some of the top 10 tactics that you can use for success. You know, our inboxes are cluttered. As I mentioned, the average professional gets 100 emails a day, solicited and unsolicited. We now have complicated, uh, if you use Gmail, we've got three different tabs where you have social, promotional. You've got highlighted, you know, emails at the top that are unsolicited. Um, you know, marketing emails. And so how can you get your emails seen and read by your audience in this environment? So here is uh, a set of 10 tips on how to improve those open and click-through rates. Um, send your email from a real person, not a generic info or general company address, because recipients are more likely to trust a personalized sender. So an example is send it from John Doe at vbout.com instead of sales at vbout.com. So you can see here when it comes up in my inbox, in my uh, I use Gmail and also our work mail, it'll come up in my inbox. It'll say Richard from vbout. It won't, you know, it won't just say vbout. It won't say a company. It has an actual name. And this, this gives it a, a human feel and people will be more likely to open it. And use a pre-header. If you don't know what a pre-header is, definitely do some reading on pre-headers as uh, there are ways that really catchy, great pre-headers increase, uh, increase your open rates. So down below, I put this image. Uh, this, is from my, this is from my inbox here. The pre-header is this text that appears on the right side. So the left side in bold is the subject line that you put in as a subject. And if you don't set the pre-header, then, um, then uh, what happens is, is it'll take some text from the, from the content, but it, uh, it can look messy if you don't set it yourself. And it's basically all it is. It should be a short synopsis of your offer. And it'll increase open rates if it's, uh, if it's something enticing and something that you, you know, make nice for your readers. And, um, yeah, there, there are tools. I know in VBout you can actually set the preheaders easily for your emails. And I'm sure there are other tools that allow you to do this as well. And this is really important for Gmail and for iPhone. If you hang on just one second. I... I just got a comment that some of the slides are cutting off. So, all right. I don't think I can, I can, sorry about this guys, please bear with me just one moment. Um, we're going to pick up right back where we left off. I just got word that some of the slides are cutting off, so I, I hope you can see most of the content. Um, one second. Okay. All right. 
So let's continue with the 10 tactics for success. Um, number three, subject lines. Subject lines are extremely, extremely important. And there are many different rules and guidelines you can use to follow these. So they should be 50 characters or less. Here's an example from my inbox. And as you can see, if it's too long, it can get cut off, and especially in mobile. So think about one thing you always should think about when you're designing your emails is how is this going to appear on mobile because emails are open on mobile more often than desktop these days. So you can, with a lot of different systems, you can view, you can preview the way that things look. I know VBout allows you to preview the way that your email will appear in different devices. And so the 50 characters or less is really important for that reason. You, you know, use a language that resonates with your buyer persona. If you're in a B2B setting that's very formal, like legal or financial, uh, don't send them very casual emails. You know, that's just one very light example. But understand your buyer persona, use the right language, include a person's first name or location, and personalize the message. It's, it's basic human nature. If I see an email come through and my actual name is in it, I'm going to feel like, I'm going to feel more compelled to open it because it seems like it's really written to me. And then include action words and verbs that create a sense of urgency and excitement. So, you know, if you look at even this quick example from my inbox, um, the word choices for these subject lines are very important. One, you know, they're fun. One of them uses an emoji, which also uh, helps increase uh, emails stand out and they work very well, you know, or they ask a question, are you creating advocates? And, um, and then, you know, everything is very clear and here six months in, big updates, it just play around with, uh, with different words and verbs, make it clear, make it exciting, you know, give, give people a reason for their eyes to fall on that subject line. And keep emails short. People are busy, and they like concise, short emails. And also, too much copy is a red flag for spam filters. And spam filters are going to be one of your worst enemies. We're going to go more in depth into that shortly. Um, include one clear CTA. So don't have too many, too many things going on in your email. Um, have one clear purpose for your email, one clear call to action, or people can get distracted. And, you know, most people, they don't read email. They don't read it too closely. They're going to skim it and scan it. So one clear call to action is best. And that, that way you'll make sure that it won't be missed. And then there's alt text that you can use in your, your CTA button. <clears throat> so there's, there's a lot of little technical things mm, that you can do with email in order to uh, improve these spam filters. So and also different filters and blocks that companies and providers may have. So some providers may block them by default. So setting an images alt text will let your readers know where to click to complete an action. And then add, add links to your images. You know, don't put a lot of links in the email, but have an image that you can click that drives traffic back to your site. And you don't even have to really you don't have to state it explicitly. We're just, we're in an environment now where people are very used to having images that you can click. So they will just try and, and click these images here to lead them to the website or, or to, to get them to the location to finish an action. So images are better than links for sure. Social sharing buttons are very important. So one of the things that, uh, you know, really increases the number of people who will see your link and who will click is allowing people to share your email with their friends and on social. We have these at, on our emails at the very top uh, on the left side and then also at the very bottom we have our buttons there that allow people to follow us on social. This is another way to get more subscribers and also to get additional people seeing. And I can't say it enough, optimize for mobile. More than 50% of email is viewed on a mobile device. And then preview and test. Preview and test. Make sure everything looks good. Make sure the links work. There's no faster way to lose your subscribers than sending out emails with 
uh, links that don't work with errors and and yeah and there are different tools that allow you to do these previews and then to test them. Vbout is, is actually one of them and the other marketing automation tools. And Litmus Mail is another one. At the end, we're going to have a whole list of tools for you. So you don't have to um, take those down right now. Um, and there's a, a few additional uh, tips. There's a, if you're already using the 10 tactics we mentioned and you want even more engagement, here are additional tips that we can give you. Make exclusive offers. So we, we used Sephora earlier as an example, um, you know, a success with email marketing. They're one company that really knows how to make exclusive offers. They know how to make their customers feel exclusive and to give out exclusive offers that are also limited time offer. And uh, these reward your subscribers and, it let, and they are more likely to share these in social media. Hmm. Contest, as mentioned, Sephora also uses those. And one very important tip uh, that we can give you is that a reader should know within seven seconds or less the purpose of your email. So what you should do is when you write that email, read it back to yourself and say, okay, if I got this and I didn't know my company and I didn't know my product, I mean, you, you assume that they do because they've subscribed, but you know, maybe they don't. Maybe they shared the email with a friend and they're not familiar with you or your brand. Within seven seconds, does a person know the purpose of your email and what's being offered, how to get it, and where to find additional information, what to do? Is that all that clear? And you can ask someone else to review it for you and, and make, make sure it's clear. And look into the design rules for mobile and for call to actions as well. There's different rules around design, uh, the right colors, wording, where to place your call to actions, and technical tools that can help you with this. We did an entire webinar and, um, and ebook on improving your conversions with better design. And I've put the link here if you want to look more into it. And um, I mean, you'd, you'd be amazed that even changing different colors in a call to action button can actually improve your, your click-through rates and your open rates. Now, for the very, very important topic of how to avoid being spam. So, uh, spam filters and providers and individuals are all getting more sophisticated and, and more intricate. So the rules for what is spam and, uh, and the fines and the, you know, the penalties you can get for being spam are increasing. I just learned today that you can actually get fined. If a company can prove that you have spammed them with emails when they didn't give you an email address, you can actually get fined, I think, upwards of $14,000. <laughs> and I know in the past, uh, it, this has been the way for a long time, you could actually get your emails shut down. You can, you can get shut down and, and lose your ability to send emails, which of course would be very bad for business, even if it only lasted a day. So it's very important that you understand spam compliance and, you know, and keep up to date on it. It is getting more intense, as I mentioned, and they add more rules, and, um, and it changes sometimes. And ways to not be marked as spam. Always have an unsubscribe link inside your emails. And include your address and contact information in the footer of your emails. Also, avoid attachments when you send mass emails. Um, a lot of people's email automatically blocks anything with attachments in it and your, you know, your engagement rates are going to be really low anyway. So avoid attachments and use tools that, uh, that check your words and uh, tell you if there are spam keywords in it. So Vbout, um, Vbout does this for you and I, I kind of blew up this image a bit so you could see it better, but, um, so this is one tool in Vbout that once you've written your email and you're going through your preview and your testing, you can actually check for spam keywords. Um, and it'll tell you 
what the spam score is for certain words that you have used within the email. And so here at the bottom you can see it was a 1.4 out of a spam threshold of 5. If you have too many spam words, um, you're going to get blocked and you're going to end up in the, in the spam folder. Um, but again, even as we mentioned here below, even if your, your email rated pretty low, below the threshold, there's a high chance your email will be delivered, but it's still not guaranteed. It's still not guaranteed. So there are additional things that you should do. Keep messages short so they don't cut out uh, before the load more option on many devices. So this load more button at the bottom, you know, um, I, I find it very annoying. I'm sure you've seen it. And if the email doesn't open up entirely into one window because they've just put in so much content, you have to click load more, which then opens a whole other screen in order for you, for you to be able to read all the content. These, these don't work. <laughs> they don't work well at all, so definitely keep them short. And optimize your photos to decrease the size of your messages. You know, um, that's, that's one way to keep them shorter. It's one way to keep the load times faster because this is, a, this is an important aspect of optimizing email for mobile is to, is to decrease the size of the messages so that they load faster. And use those spam scoring tools that we mentioned. Also, set up your SPF and DKIM records on the domain level. This sounds very technical. Um, it's even something that I can't explain too much in depth, but your domain administrator and your um, email software team will be able to help you. So these are things that um, we do here at VBout for a lot of our clients, and Richard will be able to answer questions about that after afterwards in the demo if you're interested in seeing the demo. And when you're growing your business a lot, consider a dedicated IP address with a warm-up mechanism. This is another technical thing that you can do that will lower your spam rating and that your email software team can help you with. For the non-technical side, um, you, you know, really, really handle the unsubscribe, balance emails and complaints very seriously. So, you know, when, when people are unsubscribing, take them off the list. Do not email them again. And look at your bounce emails. You know, look at your email addresses you have in your list that are, are not good. Delete those. And, and look at your complaints. Um, so below, these are more things that you can do uh, for your email. This image here, it just shows, you know, filling out your profile information. If you're using any kind of email software tools, uh, making sure all your information is there and everything is clear. All of this helps. All of this helps for you not to be marked as spam. So let's look at some of the trends in 2016. So there's, you know, email's been around a long time and it's definitely not dead. It is, uh, oh. it's still the king of content. And there's even more and better and interesting ways that people are using email. When you think about this, I mean, the average social media post will last a couple minutes at best. Uh, but an email, an email can last one to two days. And you're engaging with people who are already probably aware of your brand and have given you their email address. So the more you know how to engage these people, the better it is. And the top trends for 2016 include hyper-targeted emails. The, this is the norm. Um, customers are willing to give up their email addresses because they want unique, personalized interactions with brands. And we're going to see more and more trigger-based campaigns. So what is a trigger-based campaign? So we have here an image an example from Birchbox. Birchbox is a, a beauty brand that it's a subscription service that sends you a box every month. And this is a, on the left, they get a certain email when they sign up. And then uh, when they first give you their email address, maybe they haven't signed up, you know. So then you get one day after a sign up, this email. You know, the, the company's enticing you with more deals. And maybe during this time, You've gone, you've clicked some things, you've gone to their website. 
Then what they do is two weeks later, maybe they've probably collected some data on you on whether you opened the email, what you clicked on, what you went to on their website. Two weeks later, they can send you another email that is tailored to this content showing items that they really think that you're going to be interested in, and then they send you um, this, and maybe they'll even give you 10% off on something to really entice you to sign up. So these are, these are hyper-targeted and based all on how you behaved from the moment you signed up. Other trends. Interactive emails uh, are going to elevate brand experiences. So this is going a step beyond just the animated GIFs you might see or the videos you might see. And it's sometimes called kinetic email. And it's definitely something worth looking into and reading more about. But it basically here is an example from uh, Prenamange, and you get these really eye-catching, engaging campaigns that stand out. And you know you can click on different things, and they have um, it enhances form submissions through emails, and it basically gives deeper e-commerce integrations. So interactive emails definitely worth looking into and uh, understanding on a better level. And again, personal, personal experiences, more personalized. So here, um, this is a perfect example of how the increased use of marketing automation is enabling companies to give you know, consumers exactly what they want, which is more personalized and a relevant experience. And it, I mean, automation is by far the most effective way to deliver this. So what you have here is um, if you see on the image, there's a circle here, and it's asking you who should see this image. Should this be all of our recipients, male, female, and you can even drill down to are they in the United Kingdom or in the United States. And this way, um, with this dynamic, it, it's called also dynamic segmentation, um, you can write one email campaign and have four different emails. Uh, with images. So some of these can have men in it, some of them can have women and feature different products. It can all be part of the same campaign that go out to different people within your email list. And this is where the segmentation comes in. This is what's called dynamic segmentation. You can do this as much uh, on, on, your e on your website as well, um, but people have been doing it on websites longer. It's now moved over to uh, emails too. So other trends, coding HTML is dead. Coding emails uh, is what we used to see in the past, and now email design is, is simple. It's simple, and almost any company can design really, really great emails with powerful drag-and-drop technology, technology uh, with a lot of different software tools out there. So. Anyone can be an email designer. You know, you get uh, some of these um, some of these software platforms offer templates that you can use, drag and drop in the images. They might provide them to you, or you might have your own, and and you can create these professionally designed email campaigns. That in the past, you needed um, you needed a technical person who could do coding in order to to make those emails, but it's much simpler now. So there's no excuse not to do it, basically. Um, and another trend. So email campaigns will predict content. So let's think about this for a moment. Um, this is, again, it's, it's using more software and, and more um, automation software. But once data as, is collected from an individual and how they're engaging, um, Emails can be automated, automatically sent out showing um, products that they might be interested in. So here, um, this customer, Ash, had clicked on some things and looked at different items, and then it's sort of like retargeting, which a, a lot of people are familiar with in, uh, in advertising tech. It's sort of like retargeting. It brings together these products and says, hey, Ash, do you like these too? And it puts them in an email, and it sends it out. And um, and this, you know, it just, marketers won't struggle as much to deliver value. 
since the software and the data machine learning will be predicting the right content to send to this individual. And yeah, as I mentioned, this type of technology has been used in retargeting and e-commerce, but now it's, it's also come to email marketing and data mining. So here's some common mistakes to avoid. Um, There are certain tactics with email that can really backfire. You know, you might think that you're doing something that's going to improve your success rates, but actually some of these tactics can backfire and can lower your open rates. And some of these include uh, using words like cash, quote, and save in the subject line. These are spam triggers. And if you're not using a tool to which tells you that your spam rating on these is very high, you know, your, your emails could be ending up in the spam folder just by using these words. Um, emails that are inaccurate or have a lot of errors in them uh, are a very fast way as well to make people view your email as spam and to delete or ignore them. Um, and also just not monitoring or reviewing the results um, of your content and your creative materials you know, you can't have this set it and forget it mentality. It's really, really best to keep testing, to keep looking at everything, to keep improving and keep monitoring everything that's going on. Uh, another common mistake is delivering sporadically. As I mentioned before, consistency is really important. So if subscribers expect something daily or weekly, uh, then be consistent you know, show up as scheduled. And then the other one is not segmenting your email list. Uh, you know, you have your buyer persona and you should make your, your content relevant. In this day and age, there's no reason not to. There's a lot of tools available for you to do so. So to avoid those mistakes or to make sure that you are staying on target and you are always improving, um, how do you optimize? Well, A-B testing. A-B testing enhances your campaign's performance and it's definitely something that you should use. There's a lot of software tools out there. So really important items that we test regularly at VBOUT with our emails are um, our subject lines and different images we use in the emails. You know, you can use A-B testing to test everything from landing pages, the offer, the headline, call to action. And with email marketing, um, you know, all the same thing. Test, test different things and see what resonates best. Here's an example of what happens during an A-B test. And this is from, from VBout software, and I, I blew it up so you could see it better. But, um, you know, you try, let's say we're testing a subject line here. So what happens is a subject line, you have two different subject lines, and it goes, one goes out to group A, which is 20% of your list. One goes out to group B, which is 20% of your list. And then the, the software will monitor how many clicks you got, how many opens. And the one that won gets sent to the rest of your email subscriber list. So it gets sent to the, the next 60%. And this is... These numbers you can tweak. You can, you can change them as, you, as needed um, for however you see fit. And uh, yeah, so that's, that's the basics of how an A-B test works and how it helps you to improve on the content. Once you've seen the results, don't ignore it. Um, if you saw, you know, subject line B worked better, look at it and ask why subject line B might have worked better and try and make your subject lines more aligned with that one in the future. And that's how you optimize. That's how you use the data to optimize. You review the results from your test and you use them to improve the future content. And if you do this consistently over time, your content, your tactics get better and better and better. And you'll see your click-through rates and open rates go up. And uh, yeah, so always look at how everything is impacting customer behavior and alter the content. Look at the design as well, you know, not just the, the subject lines, the design of your call to action buttons and everything. And keep matching those and keep, keep reviewing. 
Uh, here's another example with some of the analytics that uh, you can get with email in systems like VBOUT. So we look at uh, the open rates, how many people didn't open, um, bounce rates, you know, if anybody complained. And, you know, they'll give you all of these numbers that you can also look, see how many of your goals were completed, and then you can, you know, modify that as you move forward. And, you know, those, those rates, when you look at, um, as I mentioned before, we had the general open rate of something like 32.4%, but I did mention it can be different per industry. So as you're looking at and measuring your own open rates, bounce rates, click rates, and, and all that, you can also look at your different industry. So um, customer service, onboarding, retention, newsletters, you know, different types of content and different types of industries will have different open rates. And so now we have reached the end. So here um, at the end, we've put 20 email marketing tools that you can use. We, you know, gave a short description of different tools that can do a lot of the, the different tactics and analysis that we mentioned during this presentation. And uh, these slides will be available to you, as will the recording after, after this webinar. So you can have a look at these and, and review them. So I'm sorry if some of these slides were cut off, but you will have the slides able, uh, you'll be able to download the slides and see them all and review them at your convenience. Um, but to conclude, you know, email is far from dead. It has the highest ROI in digital marketing. It's inexpensive. It's a, it's a way to really engage your audience. And, you know, the important parts are just to make your content clear, engaging, and relevant, as well as your call to actions optimize for mobile and different devices, and use marketing automation. It, it can really, really make your email more powerful with scheduling, tracking, design, and personalize. Personalize as much as you can, the content, the name, and use A-B testing frequently as much as you can, and continually analyze what's working and what's not. And that's it. So we have uh, another webinar coming up, and the information is there on the screen. Um, but we are just about at the end here. So if there are any questions, um, I'm going to I'm going to take everyone off mute so that we can field some questions here. Okay, well, we have one question that came up from Dina uh, during, during the, the webinar, an example of location to personalize. So using location to personalize is really great for, um, for events, for local vendors, uh, Starbucks. Let's, let's use Starbucks. Starbucks might send me an email if, if they have my email address that might say something like, hey, Brooklyn, come get your free latte on Wednesday. And, uh, and this is something that might catch my attention because I live in Brooklyn and, um, and it might feel like a deal that, you know, is being offered just to Brooklyn. And because the people who live in Brooklyn have a lot of pride in our borough, it, it would grab my attention. So that would be one way, Dina, that you could um, use location to personalize and yeah, it really works well. I mean, New York City might have gotten my attention, but but that that level of uh, localization would get it, my attention more. Okay, Jonah, we're going to we're going to send out an email after after this that'll have we we post all of our our slides on SlideShare and on our blog, and then we can um, and then we also put the recording on our YouTube channel. Yes, Dina, that's a great example. So, hey, Upper West Side Moms, that could be a really great one. Um, say if you're a Toys R Us or something and, and you want to you wanna grab some attention for a local deal. Um, it, it works. It works. Yeah. Yeah. Are there any other questions? Um, or, or even some things that people have been doing with email that, that really work. 
we actually at Viva we started using these emojis in the subject lines recently, and it uh, and it worked. That was one that I found surprising. Um, so that's a great one. I always like to tell people to give it a try using some of the emojis in the subject lines. Mm. All right. Oh, great. Glad, glad you found it uh, helpful, Dina. And um, as I mentioned earlier, we are going to uh, go further if you have time or if anybody wants to see some of these tactics or using marketing automation with email um, in, a, in a demo with VBout, we can do that now and we can answer some of those technical aspects about spam filters. Uh, Richard will be available to to answer some of those questions um, and to demo some of these these tactics and tricks with with VBout. So if anyone's interested, just stay on the call and um, and just let us know in the in the chat group that you'd like to see that, and we'll we'll get that all set up and ready. Thank you, everyone, and have a great rest of the day.